You're out and about with Walter today. Had to come to the dump today. So I made a run down here to town. And got some food to go. Went to the Firehouse Subs. Got her a cheese steak. And since I'm not supposed to be eating a whole lot of beef, I didn't get a cheese steak. Beef is not supposed to be good for my gout. I got a club on a sub. Mostly turkey and bacon and stuff like good stuff like that. But I'm gonna go home and poke it in my face and gnaw on it a little bit. Some of these big sandwiches you usually wind up wearing half of it anyway with all the goodies falling out both sides of your mouth. Anyhow. Yeah. I'm going to complete this vlog by showing you a little bit of a yabo from last night and uh, a look out in my bean patch. Good day my friends, Walter here. This is my little garden spot. I planted some pole beans. They're up three or four inches tall on this side, and there's a bunch of them coming up over there. And just me and my wife here, we don't need a whole lot of beans, and you'll be surprised how many beans you can get out of a little small bean patch. Well, I don't have any trellis up this way. I had an elaborate trellis out to the garden spot last time I grew some of these. But it's all grown up in briars and I'm not going to do all the work to clean up the old garden. So I turned the dirt over here pretty good. Now those bigger plants right there are some squash plants. I planted two or three crooknet squash and two or three straight neck squash. The tomato plant's coming up good. It's got some blooms coming on it. So I'm going to spend a little time today and run some strings. I already did some on here. I just took a couple old saplings and leaned them up there. It'll grow up more or less like a pup tent. When they get real thick with vines, you're going to have to reach up in there to find the bean. This ain't much of a trellis, but... And you might not think you need them that tall, but last time I grew some out in the garden, I literally had to stand on a stepladder to pick all the beans. They grow really tall. But anyway, I didn't have any more poles, so I just had these fence posts out there by the garden. I put them in the ground yesterday. And we're going to elaborately string some of this cord here. Give them a little chance to grow on. Had an extra tomato cage here, so I stuck it up right in the middle of the garden. Got some little wooden stakes here on the ground. So let's string some string. At least give the beans a chance to climb up on something. You can't let them run all over the ground. That, that would kill them. It would be the world's worst job of stringing pole beans. But we got some strings up there they can climb on until the wind comes along and blows them down. <laughs> Maybe I'll grow a couple beans out here. We'll see how it turns out. At least I say I give it a little bit of a try. Oh, I gotta go get some miracle grow and put on them, give them a little boost. I made my letters for Peewall Par out of red oak. Here's a piece of poplar, and I've got some yellow pine here. It's a little too thick. Well, I guess it's yellow pine. Looks like it to me. Poplar is about the same thickness as the letters. I just got through putting a piece of foam in that window where the, where the plexiglass is to give it. I did in the sound just a little bit of my vacuum, but I still hear it pretty good. Do I go with a wide border or do I make the whole background with a poplar?
they don't match. This piece of wood has more of a green tint. I think I like the idea of just using one. Tonight's video I'm a little tired from doing a lot of work outdoors today. I worked on my pole beans a little bit and did some more stuff. Got a little quick yabo here. A little something I ordered from Amazon. What do we got here, my friends, is a foot pedal switch. Why is it pushed down? It must have a lock button on it. That would be nice if I knew how to work it. That'd be something to deal with on another day. Oh. Just got to push. So what we're going to do with that thing is plug my scroll saw into it. The only other way to turn this saw off is with this manual switch. We can reroute the cable down to the floor, but for right now, let's give it a try. I'm going to run an extension cord down there to the floor. Okay, it looks like I got about an eight foot cord. Okay. Okay, the saw is turned on. I'll say that's on the floor and I put my foot on it. Now the saw is turned on. And all I got to do is put my foot on it. Oh, damn. You got to plug it in first, Walter. That wasn't smart. Now, third time's a charm, ain't it? So when I put my foot on it, if I'm sawing, I don't get distracted. There's less chance of getting injured or hurt. It's a really heavy duty switch too.
I think I'm going to like that. We'll do the wiring tomorrow. I'll read the instructions tomorrow, too. It's an added safety feature that's well worth that few extra dollars I spent to buy that thing. That concludes my video for tonight. Thanks for tuning in, my friends.